Hi, this is June. I recently blogged about using an API to do a syntax highlighting as you do in TextMate or Pasty. Um, well, using somebody rather than using somebody else's API, I thought it would be fun to write my own. So in this screencast, I'm going to show you how I did it using a simple Sinatra app. Um, and link below, as you can see there, is where uh, my code is. And you can take a look at it there and follow along with the screencast. Let me quickly demonstrate how the application works. So here in my editor, I have a Ruby file open. In fact, this is a Sinatra app itself. I'm going to select everything, copy it, and go to the application, and create a new snippet, paste it, give it a quick title, and generate. As you can see, it's nicely highlighted with my favorite theme, which is Twilight. One feature that I added was toggling of the line numbers, because what I normally do is I copy and paste it into my Evernote, so I could retrieve it from anywhere and also do a search on it. When you go back to the list, you see the snippet we just created, and by clicking on the show link, you go back to the snippet. Okay, let's go over some of the tools that I'm using here. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the screencast, I am using Sinatra. It's a simple web framework that doesn't do much and it's really simple and I like it for a uh, small application and it's really fast and it's rec based. So it's everything that I like. The most important component here is the ultraviolet gem. Um, it's the gem that does all the work. Uh, it will take the code and actually format it and has a necessary uh, CSS and that gets applied. So that's how you see the syntax highlighting. I'm using Mongo to store the code and the data. Uh, I consider this a document based and uh, MongoDB provides me fast and reliable data source. And I'm using Thin as a web server to uh, serve up the application. Okay, let's go ahead and create our application. I'm creating a simple Sinatra application and creating a lib directory that holds our uh, uh, models and then uh, creating a gem file and a rack of file. And the next set of directories I need to create on the public directories are obviously CSS and JavaScripts. So let's look at the gem file. Uh, as always, I'm using Bundler to uh, manage the gems. And the gems that I mentioned before are all listed here. Next, let's look at our uh, Sinatra app code. And as you can see, the first part is the all the require. And then uh, obviously, there's a uh, the processor snippet.rb that actually reside in lib directory. Um, and only thing that it's really doing is, as you can see, there's a get, post, and two gets. Um, now, if you look, there's a uh, get uh, colon ID. Uh, the reason why I use that ID is because MongoDB, it's going to be MongoDB ID. So uh, what happens is not just serial numbers, but instead uh, it looks somewhat obfuscated. So uh, that's one benefit of using actually Mongo uh, as opposed to uh, any kind of a relational database. Let's take a look at the heart of the application, which is snippet.rb. We start off with requiring ultraviolet gem and it's simple UV. And next one is obviously Mongo. I am using a constant Mongo to point to the database. I guess as an old C programmer, I really prefer constants. And as you can see, all the methods here are all class methods. Okay, the first two methods are all and find. The important thing that you need to remember here is that if you look at the all method, you'll notice that it does a find and it converts it into an array. The reason why we have to do that is because Mong with the MongoDB, it does not give you actual documents itself, but it just gives you the pointer. So that's why you need to convert to an array in order to get the actual documents themselves. Uh, the second method, which is find, and um, we are passing ID. There's a thing that you need to notice here is that we're actually converting the ID to uh, object ID from string. You have to remember that this is a MongoDB and not the uh, SQL uh, servers that you were actually used to. Okay, now let's look at the create method. This is where the uh, magic really happens. So if you look at 
uh, the snippet when we're constructing it, you'll notice that the code value we are calling uh, uv.parse method, which takes in the code and the format, the language, and the theme. Um, and you, from looking at the, uh, the code, you'll notice that uh, my default language is Ruby and uh, Twilight is the theme. And finally, I'm just inserting the uh, snippet to the Mongo. Before I continue, I just want to let you know that in this application, what I did was I took the, all the CSS files from the uh, Git repo for Ultraviolet Gem and I actually compressed and compressed so that I could actually host that in my application. So if you look at the code, you'll notice that uh, in under public CSS and application.css, that is actually the file that contains all the style sheets for, uh, for this, uh, syntax highlighting. I have one function JavaScript for toggling the line numbers. And if you look at the views, I have a basic layout and there are not much to it. If you look at show template, same thing here. Only thing that you're doing is just displaying the content tree from MongoDB. In order to run this application, only thing that you have to do is issue a thin command. Uh, obviously you need to start and the directory specified here is where the parent directory of your application is. So the first thing that you need to specify is uh, the rack up configuration file. And the uh, next one is a uh, PID. And of course the environment I'm actually running in production with a port 6789 and uh, where the directory the application is. And the last thing that you need is to specify where the log files are. And then minus D switch basically runs it as a daemon. And that wraps up this screencast. I really encourage you to go take a look at the code. Uh, everything should be self-explanatory. And you could follow me at Twitter, uh, at Rubyhead. And uh, my blog is at blog.rubyhead.com. And you could email me at june at junewall.com with any suggestions for the screencast, uh, any comments, as long as they are not offensive. Um, and I don't take criticism very well, so. <laughs> And uh, of you know of course uh, visit my uh, company's website www.mejunius.com. That's where uh, we are a children's uh, ebook publisher uh, with the great contents. And lastly, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Greg Pollock who actually uh, inspired me to create this screencast and taught me some of these techniques that I'm using. Uh, and I'm right now trying a lot of different techniques to see how it is, and I'm learning a lot. So I like to. Uh, and a special thanks and all, all the other people actually are contributing to the community. Thank you.